Introduction to Euclid's Geometry. Hello friends, welcome to this video of Introduction to Euclid's Geometry. In the previous video, we had discussed about Euclid's definitions. Today, we will discuss about Euclid's axioms. Let's understand the meaning of axioms first of all. Friends, there are generally three types of statements. One that is always true, such as the sun rises in the east, it is universally true. And the other which is always false, such as a human has four eyes. And the third one, ambiguous, that is a sentence that depends upon something, such as this statement. It is very cold today. It is possible that there may be someone who is not feeling cold or may be at some place where it is not cold. Therefore, this statement cannot be classified as true or false. But in mathematics, there are only two types of statements. Either they are completely true or false. Such as 4 plus 2 equals 6. This is always true. And 4 plus 2 equals 8. This is always false. There are also two classes of true statements. First, that is assumed to be true without proving that is universal truths. Such as we saw, 4 plus 2 equals 6. And the second, which is proved by evidence. For example, the square root of 2 is an irrational number. And it also has two classes. First, which is used everywhere or generally in every branch of mathematics. It is called axioms and the second which is particularly related to geometry. That is called postulates. We will discuss the postulates in detail in an upcoming video. Here we will look at some of the axioms given by Euclid. Let's start with a statement. If I say Rohan has as many books as Sohan and Sohan has as many books as Monu. Friends, can we determine the relationship between Rohan and Monu with this statement? Let's see. Suppose Rohan has X number of books, Sohan has Y number of books and Monu has Z number of books. According to the statement, Rohan has the same number of books as Sohan. That is, we can say that X is equal to Y. And given that Sohan has the same number of books as Monu, that is, Y is equal to Z. Note here that X is equal to Y and Z is also equal to Y. Friends, according to Euclid's first axiom, things which are equal to the same thing are equal to one another. So here, X and Z will be equal. That is, we can say that Rohan has as many books as Monu. According to Euclid's second axiom, if equals are added to equals, the wholes are equal. That is, if A is equal to B and C is equal to D, then if we add C to A and D to B, then A plus C will be equal to B plus D. If instead of adding it, what will happen if we subtract? Friends, think a little. Even then, will they be equal? Yes. According to Euclid's third axiom, if equals are subtracted from equals, the remainders are equal. That is, A minus C will be equal to B minus D. According to Euclid's fourth axiom, things which coincide with one another are equal to one another. Coinciding or identical or if we say that they are the same, then they are equal to each other. Like line AB is equal to line BA because these two names represent the same line. And in this triangle ABC, angle BAC is equal to angle CAB because these two names represent the same angle. Before coming to Euclid's fifth axiom, let's see a simple question. Tell us how many states there are in our country, India. Yes, there are a total of 28 states. That is, India is divided into 28 states. If we look at one of these states, like Maharashtra, then it is certain that it will be smaller than India. 
because it is only a part of India. Yes, friends, Euclid said the same thing in his fifth axiom. The whole is greater than the part. If we consider India as A, Maharashtra as B, and the remaining 27th states as C, then we can write A as somewhat like this. A equals B plus C. According to Euclid's sixth axiom, things which are double of the same things are equal to one another. If A and B are equal, then their double, that is 2A and 2B, will also be equal. And the seventh axiom is also such that things which are halves of the same things are equal to one another. That is, if A and B are equal, then half of A, that is A by 2, and half of B, that is B by 2, will also be equal. So friends, that's all in this session. Today, we discussed some of the axioms written by Euclid. See you in the next video. Thank you.